This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. Use the link in the description below for 5% off your order to help support the show. Innistrad Remastered has landed on Arena. It is kind of the shadows of an Innistrad block with key cards from original Innistrad added in the like historic slot. And all of these cards are playable and legal in historic. My favorite format on the client, barring perhaps Gladiator. Now it brings with it the mighty Emrakul, of course, but we'll get around to that in a video next week. Today I'm playing with Sigarda's Aid. That's right, angels will descend from the heavens and they will give us equipment for free. Well, you have to pay for the equipment itself, but the equip cost is discounted. It's buy one, get your equip cost free. In this case, we're playing two equipment and two equipment only. We're playing four copies of Colossus Hammer. That's right, the biggest fucking hammer going. It's been on Arena for a while and it wasn't that great up until now. Now we can make it cost zero when we equip it at instant speed with flash. So we can put it onto unblocked creatures, creatures that we can then give flying or evasion in some way and twat our opponent for 10, 11, or 12 damage, and boom. Shadow Spear is our other option. It gives us Life Link and Trample. Trample being one of the key parts of the deck because we want to get that Colossus Hammer over Chump Blockers. In order to find Colossus Hammer, we have a few options. We are playing four copies of a Genius Smith, which allows you look four cards deep into your deck and grab an artifact. That can be any number of our creatures, plus the Colossus Hammer itself, plus other tech. And then we have Fighter Class. Three copies of it. It's the reason we're splashing red. Fighter Class is two mana to allow us to go so to library for an equipment card and put it into our hand. The second bit, three mana to reduce the equip cost of, uh, of equipment by two is, I guess, relevant. We sometimes, on rare occasion, get the six mana, and it can make Shadow Spear equipped for free. But outside of Sigarda's A, there are two other cards from recent times that allow us to cheat on the equip cost of Colossus Hammer. The first is a new card from All Is One. It's Kemba Car Enduring. Two mana, two, two Kemba. She cares like, about equipment that she used to, but has less of a boob window. When she enters the battlefield, or a cat enters the battlefield under your control, which will be relevant in a moment when we talk about our other cat. When cats enter the battlefield, you can then equip an equipment to it. So if there's hammer already in play, let's say they killed the creature that it was already on, or you draw this, you play the hammer ahead of time. This equips the hammer for free. And there's a plus one, plus one buff to all equipped creatures. And then also on top of that, just some more icing on the cake that I've yet to activate. But if you are flooding out and the game is going long somehow, five mana, make a cat, instant speed, activate ability, you make a cat in their end step, and it can pick up the hammer, and then you can twat them when you enter. But alongside Kemba Car and Joan, we have another cat, Kemba's Outfitter. Another cat that reduces the cost of an equipment that you control's equip cost to one perpetually. That's right, digitally unique magic cards are here and they are scaring your children. This does it to either a card in hand or a card in play, so you can keep hammer in play in case you draw Sigarda's aid and buff it that way so you aren't over committing, or you can do it to something that's already in play in the like the aforementioned removal spell situation where something died carrying a hammer. And then that's not the only cat, there's one more secret cat in the command zone. It's everyone's favorite nightmare pussy. It's lowest to the dream den. It's essentially a way of allowing us to grind out if someone manages to like one for one removal us down to top decking. It's the reason that I cut a lot of the three drop cards, like a single copy of Sword of X and Y, and the Sky Maul as well, because Luris just is that a little bit more powerful. Beyond that, the deck has a few stables in, the, in this kind of archetype. We have Ornithopters for three cheap bodies, Esper Sentinels to help us draw cards when our opponent's casting spells, and Port will hold to interact with our opponent's doing and remove blockers. Machika Reign of Truth, I'm, I'm on and on about whether we need more copies of this, but I've got one copy as an extra uh, thing to draw so we can hit people for a bunch when we've gone wide. Springleaf Drum helps that going wide, it grows a weapon smith, so it allows us to play a low land count as well. And then Ginger Brute is a one drop that we can give evasion. For one mana, it can only block by creatures with haste because you can't catch the gingerbread man, so that means he's carrying a hammer very, very fast and like Naruto running himself into your opponent's face. And the last interesting part of the deck, I guess, is Blink Moth Nexus. This is a one a one flying creature in a land. So for one mana, you turn it into a Blink Moth Nexus, you can equip equipment to it and hit them. It's a last ditch case scenario. It's an artifact when activated, but most importantly, it's got some really fun layers. If Blink Moth Nexus is carrying a hammer, it no longer has flying because hammer takes the flying off of it. But then for one more mana, you can make Blink Moth Nexus become a Blink Moth Nexus again, becoming a one one artifact creature with flying to end of turn. It's still a land. This, because of layers, means you gain flying when you lost it before. So you can fly overhead and kill people with the Blink Moth carrying hammers. And that is the deck. I hope you enjoy the video. Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe on my channel. And if you're interested, I'm doing a live AMA hangout session on Whatnot once a month where I sell some bits and bobs. This month, I'm selling a Portal Three Kingdoms Chinese booster and I'm selling an All Will Be One Complete Edition. Both of those and other items, all items starting at one single pound. Use the link in the description below to use my invite link to help support the show and get £10 towards your first purchase on Whatnot, which is basically a shopping channel meets Twitch. Some people might not be into that, others will. Come join me. My next stream's on the 30th of March. With that out of the way, let's play some fucking magic.
Well, yeah, this avatar is quite popular. Uh, we've got a one lander. We do have a one drop and we have a Skarda's aid and a Springer's trap. I'm going to keep this. And Genius Smith should hopefully find us a hammer. So Kemba's outfit is one of the new digital unique cards. It's going to give her equipment and a hammer, perpetually equip one, which will tilt out some people in the comment section of this video because if it's a digital card, it is evil. It doesn't matter whether the card is fun or interesting, it is evil. Thought seeks from our opponent. They're going to take our Sigarda's Aid, without a doubt. I, I guess they could maybe take the Shadow Spear, but the Sigarda's Aid is one that enables us to hammer time people to death. Yep, Sigarda's Aid was taken. Makes sense. We're going to play a Springleaf Drum. We're going to tap the Springleaf Drum for White Mana using Kemba's Outfitter. And we're going to play a Shadow Spear. Our opponent's on some sort of reanimator plan with the Priest of the Fell Rites. I'm going to play Kemba's Outfitter as a body. It's going to give something perpetually. Uh, nothing. Nothing. It doesn't really matter. Nothing, nothing, Trogodile. Tap the Kemba's outfit for white. And I'm going to portable hold the Priest of Fell right as it's both part of their win condition and it's stopping us from attacking. Then we'll get in for two. They're going to cast Faithless Looting. We're going to see some sort of fatty go in the bin. I wonder if they're like actually playing Sundering Titan. I don't even know if it's in the format. I assume not. I assume it's how I'm going to be. I was about to say Atrax and Sarah's Emissary. I was literally about to say those two things because they're the best options for that. In best of one, the combo decks can be quite brutal and very difficult to actually beat. I'm going to play a Delia Smith. She finds us a Colossus Hammer. Doesn't do a massive amount here, but if we draw the uh, the good old Sigarda's Aid, then it will be good. We're going to make a white mana fast drawn by tapping the Smith. And then we're going to put the Spear using the Outfitter gained Perpetual Equip 1 onto one of our Outfitters. And then we're going to get into the red zone. And they'll probably block here because the Stitcher Supplier is basically an enabler. It puts things in the bin. So it dying is good for them, and then we'll get through two points of damage, taking them to 12. Mill three more. And we've still got two fatties in the bin. No fell rights in play, but they might have unburial rights in the deck as well, which is five man on the front end and four man on the back end as a flashback spell. They also have scrap work mutt. And the Harry the Unforgiving, I don't even know what this does. Does this reanimate in some way? She's five loyalty, so she can exile things from the graveyard and make a copy of it. At the moment, you can't do that to Atraxa or Sarah's Emissary. She is making a copy of Scrap Mutt. Discard a card, draw a card. Discard a second copy of Nahiri. They attack us for two, no blocks. Go to 19, and they exile. We're going to play a Plains. We're going to play an Ingenious Smith. We're going to go looking for something off the top of our library. We're going to find Esper Sentinel, fine. Play an Esper Sentinel. I'm assuming they're not playing any form of Wraths here. We're going to grow our Smiths that way. And then we're going to hold the Colossus Hammer in hand in case we draw Scarda's Aid. And it also allows us to grow the Smiths next turn as well. We're going to kill Nahiri for five damage and put one outfit into the face to take them to eight. Meaning we've got Lethal on board. I guess we could lure us to get Scarda's Aid. Maybe that's a long I should have been moving towards at this point as opposed to just playing things in my hand. Going wide makes them soft, really, to all their removal soft. That's like one for one if they're playing any. It also has to go around like uh, a big fatty as well, but it doesn't go around the track, so obviously. Esper Sentinel draws us a card as a fighter's class, which allows us to go find another Colossus Hammer. It's <laughs> wrong part of the combo. I do kind of wish we had a better way to consistently draw exactly Sigala's Aid, some sort of seek card or some sort of tutor, but we don't. Uh, Nahiri discarded some cards and they discarded an Unburial Vice. They get to make an attraction next turn if they weren't dead. Do they have a removal spell here? Well, either way, even a fail push doesn't save them. Nah, they're dead. We got there slowly but surely with a hammer stuck in hand, rotting. Um, yeah, you can't always hammer them. Did you know that when I look at the stats for who's watching my videos, around 40% of the people watching are not subscribed? Are you one of the 40%? And if you are, I have to ask the question, why are you not subbed? I really would like it if you subscribe. The main reason for that is not to just grow my ego and make my penis throb, but the primary reason for that is that when I upload videos, you'll see them in your sub feed. And it'll help you to keep up to date with the shit that I'm making. Anyway, on with the next game. We're now up against Nicol Bolas's brother, Worus. Discount Nicol Bolas. Bolas, you can buy at Target. We have an Ornithopter, a Hammer, a Shadow Spear, and a creature that makes Hammer cheap. This is pretty decent. We're going to play Inspiring Vantage. We're going to play the Ornithopter, so it's, got hate. it's not summoning sick next turn. We're going to play the Kemba's Outfitter, which will trigger and give an equipment card in our hand, perpetually equip one. I'm going to choose the Hammer, surprisingly. They don't know, though. It doesn't reveal it because it's hidden information, thanks to it being a digital card. Does that feel like Hearthstone? I guess, maybe a little bit. They've got a Watery Grave untapped here so they can go ahead and push whatever we equip to. We're going to just force the issue by playing the hammer and I can directly to Ornithopter. 
And the great thing about it being perpetually worn as opposed to like, the ordering of Sigarda's Aid is that if this is pushed to deal with this now, we can just re-equip next turn anyway. So we're not really that badly out of luck. As expected, they pushed our Colossus Hammer wielding Ornithopter and we hit twat them for two. Brewing Crab from our opponent. So they're Mill. Uh, Blueback Mill being a thing with the new Jace, I guess. They play a tap lands. They have no removal spell. They mill us for three. We draw a Sigarda's Aid. So I'm going to pay uh, some life here to play Sigarda's Aid off of this uh, shock land. Then we're going to play a Shadow Spear because we direct it to the outfit to give her trample. And then for one mana, we're going to equip a hammer to the outfitter. I guess because there's a 13-12 trampler. At this point, I don't even know if you bother block it. Just take it, go to three, and hopefully you can kill it next turn. Again, even if they kill this, we can still quite easily equip stuff next turn to the threat that's in our hand. And Luris allows us to grind out if they somehow stabilize. They go to three mana here, milling us with a crab. Even like a Jace doesn't do any. Tasha's laughter hits us for like most of our deck. We have 18 cards left in our library. And that's game. They can't beat this evasive hammer carrier. The important part of the hammer is to try and give it flying or trample so you can get through blockers. That's a really powerful part of the combo. Beity, the Jinga Taxis avatar this time. Everyone's playing the like really big villains, right? So God is a Shadow Spear, Purple Hole, Ginger Boot, a Fighter Class to go find ourselves a hammer. The important thing to know about this hand is we don't have two red and white sources to play Fighter Class, but I'm sure we'll draw one more now. They're on the blue white artifact deck playing of Trifit Foundry and Ornithopters. We can make a 4-4 here. It's pretty good. Make two four fours over two turns. We're gonna to have to just slam this, pay two life, and turn that that foundry into a hole. They will get to turn a four four, a zero turn a four four, and put us under pressure. But it stops me getting two four fours. Two four fours makes for eight damage because four times two is eight. I'm very good at math. They use the foundry in response to make one of the ornithopters into a construct with sword. I saw. Oh no! I always had swords for arms. Turns out they have hands with swords on the back of them. Much more practical. We get hit for four. Pass back. Skybridge Towers means they're probably one of the Thought Monitor decks, I would have said, except for the fact that they got lowest in the command zone. Play an Esper Sentinel. Play a Sigarda's Aid. Next time we go Fire Clark, grab Hammer, equip it. But that doesn't like stabilize us, but Shadow Spear allows us to actually gain some life. Although having an 11 11 blocker is pretty good unless they just go ahead and kill it with a portable hole or similar. Ingenious or a Smith. We could just rip Hammer off the top and then we are, like, you know, we're playing with. We're playing with portals at that point. They find a Thopter Foundry, a Red Retrofit Foundry, sorry, which was going to draw us a card, but it's also going to turn that on top into a 4 4, which is not great. They attack for 4 here. No blocks. Go to 8. We did not draw the hammer. I think we have to. Sorry, I had a little bit of a tank there, hence the, the roping. I'm going to cast Fighter Class and go grab my hammer here and just hope they haven't got a way to remove our Esper Sentinel. Then they can swing through with two 4-4s. Four uh, we have to go Shadows. I just realised, yeah, this is going to be a 4-4 four because four, they're making a 3-3 three, three now and a 4-4 four, four on the following turn. So that's rough. I guess we then have to make the Shadow Spear block gain some life. <laughs> I think I'm just dead. The correct thing to do would have made two more bodies actually go from there. Here's a 4-4 growing the smith to a to a 3-3. Three, three. Now, if they have an artifact in hand to grow the smith to a 4, but we don't die, it's not lethal. Problem is they can just activate Retro Fritter Foundry to make a servo to grow her. Let's hope they don't notice that line. Or they don't have any artifacts. I hope it's just three lands. Okay, and Genius Smith will probably find the one. Although I have quite consistently cast in Genius Smith for like 15 plus, 20 plus artifacts in my deck and found nothing. Sometimes you get unlucky. Nope, that's a portable hole. That's possibly the best artifact they could have found. Okay. Yeah, we should have played multiple bodies to block here and survive the following turn. Um, they're going to go to combat here. Wait. Did they did they fuck up? Because they they don't have a way to make an artifact here. So we go Colossus Hammer onto the Sentinel. Block of four. Go to one. Equip Shadow Spear and stabilize, I think. I guess they're keeping the hole for the hammer. We draw a card. Do we just draw another hammer? That'd be pretty funny. So they're going to take the creature or the hammer. Let's probably take the creature here. A bit silly. They had lethal. They missed lethal. So they've given us a turn to untap and try and stabilize here. We have access to four mana. We have a weaponsmith. We have a Kemba's outfit and a ginger brew and a shadow spear. So maybe we're not dead. So we're going to go ingenious smith. Grab a colossus hammer. 
pretty good pick up there. Now do we just let them swing at us and we just go Colossus Hammer plus Shadow Spear and gain all the life and they don't, then we don't die and we, we look like absolute bosses. It makes a softer portable hole, but I love being soft to an old portable hole, you know? I guess I can go drum, block. The spring drum grows the smith. Then I block, tap the smith to this to flash in the Colossus Hammer. Yeah, I think we play the drum here. Also, it kind of makes it look like we want to get blown out by what they've got. So end turn, it looks good for them. It looks real good for them. They know we've got the hammer in hand. They don't know about the Shadow Spear. But Chico does grow one of their things to be pretty big, but not as big. I don't believe as big as our Colossus Hammer. No, nowhere near. They go to combat. We pass the blockers. We're gonna put the Smith in front of the Smith. And then before damage, we're gonna do some activating of abilities and flashing of shit. So I'm going to make a white mana hit off the spring on his drum. Tapping her does not remove it from combat if you're new to magic. We're going to play Colossus Hammer at instant speed off of our Sagada's aid. I'm going to flash it in and put it onto this weapon smith here. This ingenious Delia smith. The Delia smith grows. Make my monster grow. We are going to take action and make her big. But wait, there's more. We ain't dead yet. Before damage, I would like to cast the Shadow Spear. Oh yes, I feel like I'm popping off in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Shadow Spear sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card, doesn't it? Shadow Spear gives her life link. So we're gonna gain 14, lose eight, and survive, because the life link happens at the same time as damage. They lose their six six. We get to untap, we're on seven. They have eight damage in play. The, 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 the Machiko's um, vein will grow one of them later. They play another bloody portable hold to grow my, my their stuff, but that's fine. I can actually just hit them with, with Ginger Brute here. Yeah, I think we're okay. Oh, they took the hammer again. They took the hammer again, which does kill our dealers with the damage. We want a portable hole of our own if we can help it. So we're gonna go white mana, colorless mana, ingenious smith. And we're looking for portable hole. We did not hit portable hole, which is quite frustrating. So now we're gonna go ornithopter. Play an ornithopter, grow our smith. We're gonna then play a ginger brute. And then I'm gonna tap my spring leaf drum for one white mana with my, I guess my weapon smith here. Play a Kemba's outfit, which will make the shadow spit only equipped for one now. Because if we go to a portable hole, one of their portable holes for a hammer, it would re-equip. No attacks. They're gonna grow one of their things. They're probably gonna put Lois in hand here, I'd imagine. We're putting Lois in hand next turn as well. The double portable hole is rough for us, real rough. Vault Scourge is a flyer. So that, luckily it's not gonna, like, like Machigan's not gonna combo that just to kill us when we can't block later. It's out with a 6-6 six, six and a 9-9. Nine, nine. We're gonna go to blocks. We can put Kemba's Outfitter in the way and Ornithopter in the way. They die, obviously. Next time they'll make a new body off Machiko. They should put Luris in hand right now. Oh, they already, they, yeah, they have, they have, okay. We're gonna untap and draw a hammer. That's kind of a hammer. That is kind of a hammer. They have 10, 11 damage coming back at us. But if we hit them for three, four, plus 10 is 14, we survive, right? That's how that works. So white and red. We're gonna go ahead and play fighter class. And they're gonna grab us another hammer. We're gonna play the hammer. Equipping it to my ingenious smith, which will grow her. I'm going to equip my Shadow Spear for one mana to my Weapon Smith. And we're going to go to combat. And we're going to attack for 14. Now, if we do it with the Ginger Brute, we can actually make him unblockable in the following turn. So that might have been a bit of a punt there. But we take them to 4 and we go to 21 through the power, the raw power of hammers. Now, Luris is going to allow him to recast either a Weapon Smith or on a Thop Town. I don't think we care too much about that. They do have enough power on board right now. I guess I'm going to make four fours as well off of this. They play all the top of hand. They grow the weapon smith. They play Luris, and then they, yeah. So they're on four. I 100% should have put it on the brute. I would have. It would have been a difference of one life, but brute could have got through and killed them next turn. That was an absolute massive punt because brute can say you can only be blocked by things that have haste. If we draw Kemba, exactly Kemba. No, Kemba won't grow him either. We can draw another hammer or another fighter class. Those things also work. They've got to be careful that they don't just die. If they flunge and then we like kill uh, Machiko, they can't block enough. They've got to consider that. Although the Retrofit of Family does just make them another four power. So they attack for four here. Only four? They want this 7-7 seven, seven and this 8-8 eight, eight to eat my Engineer Smith. So drawing a portable hole would be good to remove the smith or just remove the portable hole put another hammer on top of our hammer carrying smith or just kill them with a ginger actually no blocks take five here. 
So on my turn we draw a planes, which means I can play Lurus and recast an Ornithopter out of the bin. Not terrible. So we have to attack anyway. There's a world where we get in with a Ginger Brute and then kill them with Blink Moth Nexus, Blink Moth Nexus plus Ginger Brute. But the other lot thinking Lurus plus the Bolt Scourge next turn. So we're going to make a 4-4 out of this. That's fine. It's going to grow the Weaponsmith. They block with their Smith and their Machiko. So I'm not going to put Machiko in the bin because they can replay it with Lurus and that would be bad. So I'm going to kill their Smith. Portrait Machiko will live. My Ingenious Smith will die. I'm going to put Lurus into my hand. I'm then going to cast Lurus, auto-paying using the, uh, the Gen Ingenious We're on 30 life right now. Play the Ornithopter. Next time we play Kemba's Outfit to grow our hammer, we can get through the Ginger Brute and they will be dead. They have to do something pretty glorious here. I guess going Ingenious Smith into Find Portable Hole would be pretty good. It'd be fucking annoying if I'm honest. They found an S percent, so that's not what they wanted to find. I definitely miss Lethal when I'm currently trying to play catch up because of the fact. And Soul Artifact, so they've now got a 5 5 Flying Life Linker. They get in for 5, plus 4 is 9. 5 I think takes them to 10. We go to 21, my age. Okay, so we go Kemba's Outfitter for one white mana. We're back in combo territory now. I'm going to talk like a Yu-Gi-Oh player. We're going to target an equipment we control to gain Perpetual 1 Equip. We're then going to equip it to Ginger Brute. Nothing they have because it has haste, right? No. We're then going to equip a Shadow Spear to Ginger Brute as well for good measure. We're then going to go ahead and say Ginger Brute can't be blocked by it this turn, except for creatures with haste. So just why Ginger Brute is in the deck. That line of text, that ability is the best part of it all. And now we attack with an unblockable 12-12 trampling, life-thinking, hasting, gingerbread man. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. This will kill them. This will do 12 damage to their, their face. They only have 10 life remaining. Being at minus 2 is not a sustainable way to play if you haven't got a fraction of life or similar in play. You are dead. The gingerbread man is powerful. The hammer is ridiculous. You can make huge mistakes like I did and still get away with it. Because I'm bad at magic and hammer is good at magic. I hope you enjoyed the video. Just a couple of short, fun games with Colossus Hammer and Historic. The deck is sweet. The format is huge amounts of fun. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe as well. Not enough of you are subscribed. I'd love it if you would. Because like 20 people left yesterday because I dared to play Historic. So I'd like some people to come in and join me. And I actually do enjoy playing on Arena when the formats are good. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.